Hey guys, I'm heading out to do a little bit of scouting for my one of my upcoming episodes. Uh, I would like to invite you to join along with me. It's a little bit, it's not as polished. I'm not going to do a whole lot of editing of this. If there's any stops, I'm going to edit that out. But the, I wanted to invite you along to kind of see what I do when I go out scouting for an episode and learning about an area. I have been interested in heading down to the Uwari Mountains and to Montgomery County and learning a little bit more about it for a while. Um, I love riding my motorcycle down there. It is just a beautiful area. And so I want to find out a little bit more about it. What I did was I rode my motorcycle down to Asheboro, North Carolina, and I got off at the exit for the zoo, which is also 49. And so I took 49 over uh, west until I crossed over 109, and then I took 109 down to Troy. So sit back, enjoy the ride. Um, this is also a great video for somebody who used to ride motorcycles but isn't able to anymore. They can kind of go on an exploration with me. I invite everybody to come along and let's learn a little bit about Montgomery County and then I'll put all the information that I find out uh, about it into an episode that'll be coming up in a couple weeks. So, but this is really just the beginning. I'm getting out there, taking a look around and seeing, get, getting a, uh, a get, finding out the lay of the land. Now, one of the things that you'll notice along this road is we start seeing more and more pine trees as we get closer to uh, Troy. And why that's interesting is that there, this used to be through most of the southeast used to be a giant um, longleaf pine forest, uh, one of the biggest in the world. And in the 1700s, when shipping was so big, they came to the United, they, when the Europeans came to the United States, they saw this giant forest and they used a lot of these pine trees for tar to seal boats uh, and ships. And they also used, turned it into turpentine, which they used. And so that what they did is they ended up clear cutting most of the forest throughout the Southeast. It was a huge industry at the time. And um, they didn't go back in and replant a lot of the trees. That's why you find, especially up in the northern areas along, you know, Greensboro, my understanding at one time was a part of this forest. And you don't see that many pines anymore up in Greensboro. Um, a lot of other trees came in and filled in after that. So, you know, as you head south, which was deeper into the forest at that time, you can see that more of the pines repopulated when they did this big clear cut in the 1700s to create the tar and the turpentine. And that's why we're called the Tar Heel State. Um, at least from the research that I've done is because of this tradition of and all the pines that we had and all the shipping that we had of creating this tar. And of course, we have, you know, such strong ties. Not only are we known as the Tar Heel State, um, but our uh, state toast uh, starts off, here's to the land of the longleaf pine. And it's a great toast. If you haven't read it, Google it. Um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it's really quite nice. And so anyways, that's they used to have the kids memorize it in school back about 30 years ago. I don't think they do that anymore, um, but it's a nice toast. It's worth taking a look at. Ah, uh, the corn, the corn's coming in. 
What's the saying? Knee high by the 4th of July for the corn? Now this was an absolutely gorgeous day. I had that morning decided to head down to the Uaris instead of up into the mountains. Generally during the summer, I like to head up towards the mountains because it's cooler. Uh, it's usually about 10 degrees cooler. So once we get up in the 90s, uh, if I go out on the motorcycle, I'm more keen to go up towards the mountains because if it gets too hot, it's almost like having um, a hair dry, a giant hair dryer being blown at you. It's, it can be quite unpleasant. So, um, you know, and this whole experience for me is about enjoyment. Now here, unfortunately, this is about the last thing that you want to see when you're on a motorcycle is, you know, have this kind of construction. There's actually an escort vehicle that's going back and forth. And you can see I'm playing around with the GoPro here. Um, but there's a escort vehicle that will show up and escort me through the construction area. And you can see that I am, of course, the first in line. So what that meant is I sat here for quite some time until I was allowed to go. So I ended up cutting this in a couple minutes. I'm actually surprised. There we go. And uh, so I cut that out the long wait. Boy, look at all those fingerprints all over my phone. I need to wipe that down. But, um, you yeah, know, this is, you know, this is the last thing that you want to see on one of these kind of trips, but it doesn't last long. Uh, we'll scurry on through here and keep going to head down to 109. Oh, that's what I was saying. Uh, yeah, it was just a gorgeous day heading, um, you know, when I got up that morning. It was a little cool. And so I decided, you know, I had been thinking about doing a trip down the Uaris. And that morning I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity and do it because it's such a beautiful day. And it really was. It was just gorgeous, gorgeous riding. It was cool, not hot. Uh, which is what I prefer. I, you can always put on a jacket and some gloves. Um, of course, I misplaced my gloves, uh, so I don't have any handy, um, but I, that will be remedied really, relatively soon. It's inconvenient now, but I sure enjoy the new roads when they finish up.
One of the things I've been trying to do uh, on these trips is figure out a way that I can get better sound of the motorcycle and riding along. For um, you can hear the wind there, you get this wind noise, and I'm not even going that fast. So if I put a lavalier mic on the on the on the motorcycle itself to try and pick up the sounds of the motor, I get a lot of this wind sound. And so I thought, well, I'll protect it by putting it in a balloon. And I tried that, and it helped. Um, but at the higher speeds, it gets still gets very loud. What I figured out was, you know. I can do with these things. I even went as far as to stuff the microphone under my seat uh, in the battery cavity. Um, and I still ended up getting a lot of this wind sound. It didn't make that big of a difference. And so what I figured out was, you know, at a certain speed, it's not, the sound's not coming from the wind hitting the mic. The sound is coming from the wind hitting the bike and it's just recording it because you know that's a lot of what i hear when i'm on the motorcycles the sound of that wind and um, you know it can be hard sometimes with that helmet on if you're going at high speeds uh, to hear a whole lot of what's going on around you and so i typically will keep earbuds in and just listen to music while i ride along and so we are finally at the end of this construction i am anxious to get moving along so i kind of hustle on through here and we're not too far from 109 where we'll be turning south and heading down into Montgomery County. Now there's a couple of things that I went that I know about Montgomery County that I wanted to kind of look at or look for. And the top one is going to be Farm Life Outfitters. Um, you know, I know uh, I don't remember her name, but the woman who runs uh, or owns uh, Farm Life Outfitters. You know, she really is a very hard worker. Uh, she does a lot of events. She's very active on her Facebook page and she's just got a terrific shop. Um, I think she sells everything on Etsy, if I'm not mistaken. It might be Shopify. Um, but she has just fantastic, very clever designs about a, an experience of being a family-oriented farmer. And um, her shirts are very cute. And she has a lot of pride in the fact that she is a farmer and is out in, out in the county. And so that's something that I, you know, I going down to Montgomery County, I know about Farm Life Outfitters. Uh, I think she does it out of her house. She's a small business. So I don't think that that's, I don't think she'd appreciate it. We just showed up at her house uh, and started recording something. But, you know, we're going to look at a couple other uh, places. I, one of the things I want to find out about on this trip is if I should divide it into two different episodes, one about Mount Gilead and about the Indian Mound, and uh, one about Troy and the Uwari National Forest and Baden Lake. Um, I think there might be a little bit too much information once I get everything broken down and find out a little bit uh, to fit it all into one episode. I know that the last episode I did was about 38 minutes long, and I think you know some of the feedback that I got was it was too long. And so I'd really like to try and keep these to about 20, 25 minutes. Not when I'm going scouting. I'm giving you the full footage so you can come along and enjoy the ride. Um, but. The episodes that I do on our North Carolina story, I would like to keep to 20, 25 minutes. So I will probably have to break it up into two different episodes. Now, another place that I know about is the vintage in Mount Gilead. Um, and I didn't make it down there today. I got to Troy and I probably should have taken the time to just head over to Mount Gilead while, while I was down there. Um, and I, I'm sure that I will go back down on at least one more trip uh, down there to kind of look around and figure out a good motorcycle route going through the area. Um, when I do ride down there on my own and I'm not recording it in the past, th this is typically how I do it. I do it kind of loosey-goosey. There's a lot of people that spend a lot of time you know, planning out their routes. 
uh, I like to explore, find new things. And so I'll say to myself, you know what? I'd like to go ride my motorcycle in the Uari Mountains. And so I'll just drive down there and just start driving around. And, you know, I know that if I hit Baden Lake, I'm going too far west. I know that if I hit um, two, uh, 220, that I've gone too far east. And uh, so anyways, and, you know, they have the, the county boundary markers. So I'll just drive around. And then when I'm done exploring, I just, you know, ask Siri to, to take me home. And so, um, you know, I'm not... Even though I've ridden through the Uari Mountains a number of times, I don't necessarily know the names of the roads because I've never been that organized with it. I've just kind of driven around and looking at, looked at things. I can tell you I've always thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and it is, I think, just about everybody ha- heads up to the mountains. I mean, they call the Uari Mountains. It's, they should be called the Uari Hills. I mean, the reason they call it a mountains is it used to be a mountain range. Uh, I don't know if it technically still is or not. Um, but at one point, they were quite stunning mountains. Um, they think that the it was about 20,000 feet high, uh, and this was about 500 million years ago. And as this mountain range has eroded down, a lot of that material has washed out and filled in a lot of eastern North Carolina. So the coastline probably came in a lot further Uh, to the west than it is now and I think that's why you know if you go over not too far from here you hit that Pinehurst area and the sand hills and you know there's a lot of sand in the soil there and I think that that probably was and I could be wrong but uh, I think that was probably right along where the coastline was at one time because there's so much sand in that area. Um, and eventually I'll do an episode on that I'll research that and I'll I'll know a little bit more about it. but it's just kind of interesting that these hills, as they eroded, uh, really changed the landscape of North Carolina like they did. So they're not dramatic mountains anymore. They, I think the peak is about 1,000 feet, um, but they sure are fun to ride around in. They just, it's, it's just pretty, and it's not a challenging drive a ride. It's one that you can kind of sit back and relax on and just enjoy the scenery and not somebody just prattling on for no reason. So I'll just be quiet here for a second. Another place I'd heard about in Montgomery County was uh, the El Dorado outpost. Uh, somebody said, don't say El Dorado, say El Dorado. So it's, it's the El Dorado outpost. Um, but I don't know much that, that much about it. So I know I go through El Dorado. Um, so I don't know if I passed it, I, I didn't notice it. So hopefully I can see if I did pass it and, and look into that a little bit further.
Okay, we made it up to 109. Now, 109 travels from Thomasville. Now, I think it actually, if you continue on it past 85, you'll end up over in Winston-Salem. But um, it goes from Thomasville straight down into, well, it goes straight down to Troy. Now 109 is a pretty straight road. If you want to enjoy some of the kind of slow turns through this area, you really should probably get off 109. I was just taking the most direct route down there. Uh, I still think it's a pretty road. I think up in this area, not too far, is Jump Off Rock. Um, and it seems to me like it is just a uh, rock outcropping by a river uh, where people just simply jump into the water. And so, but I didn't get an opportunity. That's something I might go look at and go down to it and see, you know, or at least online, find out a little bit more about it. Uh, if you know anything about Jump Off Rock, please leave it down in the comments. I would love to learn about it. See, and let me know if you think it's worth going by and taking a look at. Now, not too far up here is the Uwari Forest. And I took, on the way back, I took a little uh, detour down that way. And it didn't look like there was a whole, I didn't see a ranger station or anything like that or a park area. Um, it looked to me that it, like it's more camping and hunting um, type activities. And I did see a number of dirt bikes, so there must be some trails back there. Which, by the way, uh, I am starting to think about an adventure bike. Um, and if I get that, because I think it would be really neat to be able to get, not just go and find out things that not everybody talks about it in, in an area, but get to locations that not everybody can get to. And so with an adventure bike, I'd really be able to hit some of those back roads and see areas of a county that, that unless you hiked out to it, people wouldn't necessarily get to see. And so I am giving serious thought about an adventure bike. It's not something I have ever really considered before. I enjoy a cruiser because you can just kind of lean back and, and just enjoy the ride. And for me, that's really what it's about. Um, and I've never been interested in a racing bike because I'm not interested in racing anybody. I just like uh, driving around and enjoying the experience of being on a motorcycle. And most importantly, I love the exploration. I love meeting new people. And I just love to learn new about an area it's just fun for me and so that's one of the reasons i created this this is one of the reasons i have loved motorcycling for the past 30 years um, i used to ride with my father-in-law and he's an engineer and you know he enjoys learning about these facts and about you know different areas as well and uh so, you know, that's kind of an experience that we had uh, together going back quite a few years. <coughs> Excuse me. See the pines? See all the pines? Now we're starting to head deeper into where the pine forest was.
And these pines that you see, well, we just, there's some. Uh, those pines are long leaf pines. They have really long needles. Now, one other thing that I know about this uh, area, and we haven't gotten up to El Dorado yet, but I think it's gonna be, it's not too much further up here, um, is that this was the, that the very first gold rush in the United States happened here in the Uari Mountains. And the story I read was about, you know, some guy who found a very sizable gold nugget in a stream was using it to prop open a door you know, and he ended up selling it to somebody for like $3 and 50 cents. And it was worth uh, quite a bit more money than that. Um, and that's one of the things that started the gold rush to this area. And I don't, when Charlotte, I guess Charlotte was around at that time. Um, and I think that they went into that, to the Charlotte area is where a lot of those gold miners would go. Not to do the gold mining, but would go into, when they went into town, they would go into the Charlotte area. I would assume that El Dorado uh, is named that because of El Dorado, um, because of the gold. my setting on the GoPro on flat, I think. I forgot to switch it back to wide angle lens. We would be able to see a little bit more with the wide angle. I need to remember on the bike to make sure that it's on wide angle going forward. Yeah, the road right along in here is just relatively straight and not a whole lot to look at. Um, you know, some of the things you, that you can't see is there's some nice farms that I passed. Um, I always enjoyed looking at the animals.
Okay, and seeing that road off to the right, you can pull over there, and I assume that there's an access to the river here. On this ride, I didn't go over to the to ride along Baden Lake, um, but I would like to get back down there and drive along a little closer to there and see what's there. Somebody had mentioned that there's a restaurant down there, and I'm going to take a look at my notes real quick and see if I can find the name of it. Um, but it, they said it was very good, and wow, is that it? The River Wild Restaurant. So that's one I want to go down and try and take a look at, see if it's any good. And another big thing I know in the Wari Forest is Bigfoot. There has apparently been some sightings and a lot of uh, legend and rumors about Big Bigfoot, and so I'm going to explore that a little bit more. When I stopped to get a cup of coffee in Troy, I noticed that in the uh, coffee shop they had a little display for Bigfoot in there as well, including a great um, uh, little metal lunchbox. I was thinking how much my kid would probably in, uh, like having that. I probably should have picked it up for him. But I will be back. Well, I had to take a little bit of a break from recording, so if I repeat myself at all, I apologize in advance. Kind of reviewing some of my notes here. I want to take a look at the Front Porch Vintage Shop and learn a little bit more about that. And 
and that's in Troy. I'm not sure if I had mentioned the El Dorado outpost. I'm not. It, I have listed here that this was in Troy. Um, I need to look them up online and learn a little bit more about them. Town Creek Indian Mound. I would, if I'm going to separate it into Troy and Mount Gilead, that's what I'll do. Um, And then the River Wild restaurant I have listed as Mount Gilead. However, I think I was told that it was over by Baden Lake. So um, I'll have to look into that and find out a little bit more about that restaurant. So anyways, those are kind of my thoughts. If you guys have any other ideas of things that I should see um, or look into while I'm here, please let me know. And of course, I've got to learn a little bit more about the history of uh, Troy and Montgomery County, because that's what interests me, and that's usually what I talk most about. So. Also, part of what I do when I go out and I do, uh, and I look at an area is I try to find places that would make good photography. And so, if you know of any locations that are have a beautiful vista or is unique in any way, would be unique uh, in a picture or a photograph, uh, please let me know down in the comments because I'm looking for that as well. And even if I have to hike out to it.
think my camera made that turn very well. <clears throat> now I'm going to drive through town here a little bit and kind of get a uh, feel for the downtown. They've got a great downtown and I go to the right from this point. Um, and there's just some beautiful old houses, just gorgeous. But, uh, oh, and also to the right where we just came from, I noticed there's a little park area, but they also have an area there where it looks like they can hold some outdoor theater, um, which is pretty interesting, especially for a small town. It's great to see them have those kind of activities. Now, while I'm downtown, I end up going to the Uari Mercantile uh, coffee shop and I go in there and I, I get some coffee and I visit with a couple of people and there's one young lady who uh, was serving me and uh, she was very helpful very nice and she suggested that I go and I talk to Montgomery County Community College about a program that they have but unfortunately uh, it appears that it might be a violation of YouTube's um, policies and so since I don't want my channel taken down uh, I think I'm gonna have to skip over that program unfortunately now the other thing somebody had mentioned to me is Karen's fried pies um, you know, I just found out, uh, when I was looking around that, uh, that the Uwari Mercantile coffee shop carries them. If I had known that I have been, I've been wanting to try one because I hear that they're just fantastic and I would have picked one up there, but I didn't realize that I, I didn't see it. Um, I wasn't looking too closely at the desserts, but next time I go through there, I definitely want to try one of Karen's fried pies. I hear they're just delicious.
Well, from this point forward, I end up driving around a little bit more. I stopped by um, the Uari Mercantile Coffee Shop, and then I head out to Montgomery Community, uh, Montgomery County Community College to talk to them about their program, <clears throat> and then I head back to towards Greensboro. So, ooh, things just went kind of black there for a second. So I'm going to uh, sign off here. I'm going to add some music to the rest of this video. And uh, if you guys can make sure that you like the page, um, subscribe to us on YouTube. And make sure that when you subscribe, you ring that bell so you'll be notified when we post our upcoming episode. Um, and share this out because we would really like to have a, a good program for Montgomery County. And any kind of input helps. Um, we always like to try and dig a little bit under the surface and get find out things that people aren't talking about uh, as much. Um, and uh, so anyways, uh, and the more people see it, suggestions, uh, the more it would help me. So thank you very much for watching. And hopefully within, we're hopefully in about two weeks or so, um, we'll be able to get a new episode up on YouTube. And uh, I'm not sure if it will be the next one, so it might be the one following that, depending on time and how I can arrange people uh, to meet with me and to visit with me. Um, and so, you know, it's, it might be the episode after that, but it will be coming up shortly. And uh, we will definitely be pasting on our fa uh, Facebook page uh, what we're doing so that there, there won't be any surprises there about when we do it or what we're talking about. So make sure that you like, like our Facebook fa page. That's how we communicate with everybody. And, uh, and I will see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it.